Hi everyone, I'm Erica of the storytellingjubeler.com and this is Coffee Time with Erica, my weekly live broadcast always on Tuesday when we can like talk about all bead related stuff, about uh, get to know each other some more and whatever, drink coffee, of course. So say hello to me if you are already here, just type something in a comment Maybe tell me where are you watching from, if you are drinking a coffee or a tea or a lemonade since the days are getting hotter, if you have maybe an ice cream, whatever. Just let me know if you are here and if you can hear me and see me. Kata is here. I'm so happy to see you. Katy, Petra. Hello, ladies. Zuzi, Christina, Angelica. Oh. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm very, very happy to see you, ladies. Connie is also here. It's funny to see that we always have like a cluster of beaters from the Netherlands, of course, and then a cluster of beaters from Sweden, Stockholm. And then there is the gang from Slovakia and Hungary. So it seems like uh, we tend to like group <laughs> but then yeah miriam manuela hello ladies welcome so what are we going to talk about today i was incredibly effective during the weekend okay and i always forget that katy and tanya are from belgium i'm so sorry like i know that you are from belgium but i always said say netherlands sorry <laughs> <gasps> oh, and Karen from you uh, from the USA. Miriam is from Switzerland, of course. Manuela is from Germany. Yeah. yeah. So back to the topics of the day. Uh, well, I decided to take the weekend really like just chill and easy. So, for example, on Saturday when we had very, very nice weather, then I was just sitting outside on the balcony and beading. And I already came up with the design for our Friday bead together. So <laughs> compared to last week when I published the necessary material list like a couple of hours before we went actually we started actually beading, I think that this is nice progress and i will actually show you the design and uh, tell you the materialist at the end of the broadcast so make sure to stick around until the end we will also uh, talk a bit about last week's speed along we together and of course we will talk some more about the monthly topic how to be a green or at least a greener beater since since it's a progress and not like not like one thing what we can tick it off but we are, we should always like look for ways even more and more ways how to be like greener beaters in the meanwhile uh andrea tuned in linda from australia anita welcome ladies it's very nice to see you here again so last week on friday we had or fourth, I think it was the fourth already, fourth be together. So no one has to be alone while we are stuck at home and isolating responsibly. So we were working on the Chloe pendant or earrings, Chloe earrings, because some of you made it actually into earrings. Hello, Sharon. And uh, this was my original version. I can't show you a second version because like when I was attaching the last row, then my fire line broke. So everything just fall apart. <laughs> but uh, I have some beautiful, beautiful pictures here from other readers. So this uh, orange uh, and teal version is from Mariella and I really like it. It's very cheerful. Then we have this Chloe pendant from uh, Katy. I love the um, like pale turquoise and gray tones. I think it came out very, very beautiful, Katy. Then we have 
Sheryl, Sheryl B did already four <laughs> different color combinations. And I like them, all of them. I can't even decide that each one I like the most. And then we have here Nora, who is a Hungarian girl, but also living in the Netherlands, just like me and just like Niti. Uh, in the meanwhile, Joanna, Anita, oh, Anita, it's her first time that she joined. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> So, uh, these were some of the nicest examples of Chloe, what I have received. My sister and helper, Yvette, she already uploaded many, many different variations to the group album, what you can find uh, that you can find on the page. Make sure to check it out because I think it's so inspiring to see all kinds of different uh, all uh, variations of the same designs. Someone made short earrings, someone made them actually like longer earrings. Pendant, Zuzi actually made a brooch, and I think it was awesome. And the link, what you can see on the screen, you can still access and download the Chloe tutorial. There are now two options. You can either download it for free, or you can actually decide if you want to support the beat togethers, and you can also like buy it for five euros if you think that those two hours uh, and the design itself were worth it and at this point i would really like to thank those who decided for the second option and also thank everyone uh, who joined in because i think it was like the funniest and best <laughs> and best uh, addition of the beat together what we've had so far for those who haven't seen it yet for uh, or for for our new beading friends for example anita a quick recap for example, we were talking with the ladies that about a specific shade of green that what would be the best word to describe it? Lime, avocado or chicken shit or something else. <laughs> or for example, oh my God, yeah, there was the moment when I managed to rip apart my whole, whole uh, pendant and then we, in like half a minute I poured uh, my coffee accidentally on the remaining part and as I stood up then I revealed like I have this fancy silver top and I have yoga pants and then we started to confess to each other like who wears yoga pants, who is wearing uh, pajamas or who doesn't wear pants at all. So I think it was really funny and I'm already really looking forward to the next edition. In the meanwhile, Maria, Aniko, Barbara, and Yvette, uh, Yvette uh, tuned in. Teresa, welcome, ladies. Barbara is saying, I am sitting at my desk in the office, and I am so jealous to all of you who can bid now. Have a wonderful time. Thank you, Barbara. Today's edition of Coffee Time, it's actually just like kind of a talk show. And uh, on Friday, I hope that you can also maybe tune in and be with us. Take care and, and uh, let's be together on Friday. So, after, uh, so make sure to follow the link and download Chloe and then show us the different color combinations you come up with. So, as you might know, every month I have a different uh, topic I like to focus on and I think the hottest most important topic we should be talking about not just in the beading world but in general is like how to how to be more eco-friendly uh, eco and I think it's the highest time that we finally start to talk about this in the beading world because i see a lot of uh, like usually what i see the kind of approach is like buy as many beads as possible i want to have everything but i think we should really rethink this option this uh, this approach and uh, yeah we should we should choose a different way of like of course having lots of fun and and uh, but but being more uh, eco friendly and this is this is a 
like a process, I think. So it's not like you can tick it off that you are now a green beater or we at the storytelling jeweler.com, we really aim to be a greener and greener company. So we are taking steps and uh, we already have some ideas, but we are also very open to any suggestions, any questions you might have. As for now, I identified like three areas where we could go, I think, a lot greener. And then I hope to fine tune them by time and invite you to participate in these three ways. So, my little green friend, Estefan, who is already on the screen, he will be a lot more with us in April, also because it will be his first birthday on Earth Day on the 22nd of April, but also he will have some ideas how to be a greener beater. And the first thing he told me when we started to talk about it, that we should travel as little as possible. Because as you might know, most of the beads, they are made in the Czech Republic, but in many cases, they travel back and forth between the Czech Republic, then they might go to a wholesaler in uh, the USA, then they might come back to Europe or to the shelves of your bead shop. And that means thousands of unnecessary kilometers. And what we aim to do at the storytellingjeweler.com is that we try to track down as many manufacturers and as many uh, companies directly in the Czech Republic at the Crystal Valley as possible. And since the, whole, uh, since the warehouse moved to Slovakia, then that's just a uh, very little uh, distance to travel. The beads don't travel by an airplane. airplane. They take the road and they travel from the Czech Republic to the warehouse in Slovakia, where my sister Yvette will pack your orders and they uh, and she will ship them directly to your place. So that's the shortest possible distance what we can travel. And of course, not everything is possible to source in the Czech Republic, but we are working very hard at it to uh, uh, to find as many as many possibilities to purchase, uh, to find interesting material for you as close to the warehouse as possible. And uh, also in this way, be a, being a greener company. Zuzi, she's my good friend from Slovakia. Uh, and uh, she has a very, very green approach also in her household. And she wrote, it's similar to buying clothes. Think before you buy, buy responsibly. What will be the next step after purchase? Will you use it or just stash it? That's so true. Uh, Zuzis, uh, and then Linda says, would you wholesale to beat shops that way? Uh, well, we are at the moment uh, focusing on beaders, on selling to beaders, and then like uh, our goal is to like really like cut out this extra journey or all the extra journeys. But we want to like source the beads directly from Yablonets, take it to the warehouse, which is just a very uh, very small distance, and then directly to you. And uh, wholesaling. I think it might be uh, an option for the future, but for now, I really like, I want to stay connected to you guys. I don't want to work with big companies. Like at the moment, at the moment, this is really like the most important for us. Then the second topic, what I would like to mention, and I think it's really important, it's the problem of the packaging. So we try to use as many paper packaging as possible, but there are some instances where it is necessary to uh, pack the beads into plastic. And I don't like it, but yeah, these kinds of Ziploc bags, how else could we package the beads so it's possible to uh, see them 
from outside. So I found a company which makes Ziploc bags from recyclable uh, kind of plastic. It's still plastic, but it is possible to actually recycle it, not just throw away as, uh, as with the ordinary ones. So that's a big project for the future that we want to, want to order a big batch of these recyclable Ziploc, Ziploc bags. To, to make it more, to make the packaging more eco-friendly. And uh, today, when I mentioned what are we going to talk about uh, in the storytelling building club, then uh, Zuzi also reminded me of the possibility that while I used to have a bit shop in Slovakia, then uh, the customers, they could bring us back the packaging. They just uh, uh, needed to remove the uh, uh, the paper tags, and then they could bring us back the packaging. And uh, it's what it was a great way. We we always reused the packaging for new beads until they fall apart at one point. So I am thinking about the possibility that if you collect the Ziploc bags, uh, this just came to my uh, my mind like maybe half an hour ago when I was uh, reading Zuzi's answers, that uh, if it would be possible that you collect the Ziploc bags from us, and then maybe when you have like a lot, then you can send them back to us. But for now, it's an idea. And yeah, let's see if you like it. And uh, we could, uh, we could uh, maybe provide uh, shop credit for the shipping fee if you send us back like a big bunch of the Ziploc bags. And I see many of you are saying that you recycle your Ziplocs and that's great. I think so. it's so important not to throw away uh, the bags directly after using them. Also, when you receive a, um, an envelope from us, then uh, to protect the things, then there will be maybe like bubble wrap, then try to reuse the bubble wrap or try to re reuse the organza as much as possible. And I think third, uh, besides uh, traveling and... Uh... Oh, Katalin says, we can organize the recycle collection per country. That would be awesome. That would be awesome if we could have like a designated beader who collected, uh, collects the Ziplocs and then you could send uh, them back to us. We would give you like shop credit for the for the uh, shipping fee, and we could reuse the bags. It would. It's a. I think we will put this together. <gasps> Sharon says I have done that for my local beach shop for quite a while now. Their plastic bags, the bead tubes, and their paper bags. If not worn, yeah. Or like maybe ask even your local beach shops if you remove the tags that if you could be bringing or 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 zip locks to them whatever let's think about this and uh, but but keep, let's keep it on our minds and the third topic what is i think very important that this instead of like buying as many beads as possible because of course I, as a beater, I also want to have a big stash and uh, as many colors as, as possible. And I don't want to wait for the new ones. But I think it's very important to go at it like we can't say like I will not buy beads. That doesn't feel good. And also like, <laughs> yeah, think about the bead shops. <laughs> but uh, I think we have to take like a very responsible approach and uh, buy beads like as a conscious decision of course from time to time it's nice to splurge and just get whatever we uh, we like but like i think like most of our stash it should be the result of some conscious thinking and that's what we actually try to do here also at the storytelling jubilar that uh, basically everything what we offer we offer also uh, also a project to use them so 
we do we are not the beat shop who will have all the hundred beat shapes or ten thousand beat shapes with all the ten thousand colors, but we will have a selection, and you will always have projects how to use those specific beads and since everything is like filtered through my own uh, well it's like a personally curated selection and when you shop at the storytelling jewelry.com then it feels like if you have been shopping or if you have been like finding new treasures in my own stash uh, then it's like you can you can buy whatever and they will very possibly be very easy to combine. But I try to like uh, come up with a, with a collection which goes very well together and easy to combine. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the colors will look nice together. And I think it's also doable on a personal level that even if, if, if I don't know yet that what, how will I exactly use this bead, but it, I know that this color really falls into my, my, uh, what I like, then there is a bigger chance that I will actually use it in the future. And Niti says, I can already bring you a bag, uh, full bag. Please do that. Next time when we meet, then please, if you don't know how to recycle them, if you have more than enough, it's more than welcome. You, uh, you are more than welcome to bring them back. We will, uh, we will recycle them, of course. And in the meanwhile, Lorraine Betty uh, uh, joined us. Welcome. Jonas says, I just found one of your patterns to use a batch of chevron beads I had. I will send you a picture. I am looking forward. And actually, you might have not noticed, but there is also a filter on the web page that you can click when you go on the tutorials, then you can click on a specific uh, bead shape and it will show you all the tutorials which use that specific bead shape. So if you have, for example, some leftover chevrons as Joanna does now, or whatever, Ginkos, Gen Duos, then you can just visit the page click on the specific bead, uh, bead shape, and then you will, you will see all the tutorials which use the shape. And it helps you to, helps you to uh, use up the leftover beads. Zuzi says that she loves that filter and she uses it quite often. Okay, I'm really happy about that. Like I was, I was a bit afraid that it's a bit too hidden. I will actually make a screenshot of it and post it on the page to show it to uh, show it to everyone so so they can find it. So and also, uh, well, as a beader myself, I uh, accumulated a huge, huge, huge amount of beads over the years, beads and components and stones, and those who were with me last week know that uh, I had like a kind of a distash sale because I realized that some of the stones are with me for like nearly 15 years and like when I am uh, rationalistic about it then I know that I will not have time to use them at all so I decided to share them with you and many of you uh, grabbed some treasures and uh, Yvette already contacted you how to how, how to get them but i'm really happy that you gave gave my treasures a second chance because it's also i think a very nice way to uh, buy like pre-owned beads and not the not the new ones and i just want to encourage you to do the same between your friends if you have a beading group then why not designate uh uh uh, meeting when everyone can bring what they have, what they think that, yeah, probably I will not use it in the near future. And uh, yeah, you can like uh, sweat beads just as, for example, I sweat clothes with my friends and I really like this way of like recycling. So, and uh, at this point, I would also like to mention our special deal for the week, because after looking at the bottom of my own drawers, 
my friend Lenka from Elto Studio. She also told me like, you know what, I have a lot. And she also wants to, wants to be reasonable about the amount of cabs what she produces, of course. And uh, we teamed up again. And during this week, you will be able to grab some cabs which were hidden at the bottom of Lenka's drawers. And this way, if you help us to empty the stash, then in the near future, we will be able to make new things. But before, before we come with new collections, then we definitely need to, need to uh, share with you what we already have. And there will be some super special deals. I will put together some little collections uh, and I will start posting them tomorrow morning. It will be the same style as with the cabochons last week and the glass beads from my uh, drawer. But this time it will be very, very, very special with the handmade cabochons. So stay tuned. Tomorrow they will start appearing on the page. This trapezoid from in white color, this is very special, for example. And I really like this mandala cabochons. <laughs> so stay close, stay close. And <laughs> yeah, Petra says a cabin chick and shit color, indeed. <laughs> That's the best, right? <laughs> Petra says, I'm a lost place. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, stay close, ladies. If I manage, I will maybe start uploading the deals today already, but no promises for now. Stay close, stay close. Because Lauren is asking if, if it's that handmade. Yeah, every one of these cabochons, they are in fact art quality handmade cabochons. And they are made and designs designed uh, by a beader for beaders. So when you work with them, then you will see like the angle of the cabochons is just perfect to bezel them, for example. And ladies who already know uh, or and already worked with Lenka's cabochons, can you maybe write something about them in a comment? because it's Lorraine's first time that she's here, she hears about them. So it would be really nice to tell her, I think, that what are these cabochons? <laughs> and how do you like them? And yeah, if they are any good. <laughs> so I promised you that I will reveal the design uh, and the design for Friday. From, uh, already now, Kathleen says that they, they are absolutely amazing and unique. She has a lot. She's a, Kata is a true collector. Zuzi says it is highly addictive. Indeed, indeed. And uh, Yvette says they are designed and made in the EU by our bidding friend. Yeah. And Shall I keep you waiting some more or do you want to see the design for Friday? I am actually very proud of it. And I think that this is the best design what we have had so far. So do you want to see it? I hope so. This time, again, it's based on a motif and I made a bracelet. Uh, out of the motifs, but again, it will be possible to make a pendant or a necklace by connecting several pieces or earrings. It's completely up to you. That's why I love beading from components. Yeah, and Kat Kathleen added, no, I'm not a collector. I would call myself a hoarder. <laughs> but no judging, my friend, no judging because, yeah, I have the same. This is just one box from the menu. <laughs> so the design, what we will be working on on Friday, 
oh, just one more. I have to, I have to read what Susie wrote. She wrote, these caps are pure love, perfect for simple, but also complicated designs. Bezel easily eye-catching. So the bracelet, it's called Starry Night. And it comes from Van Gogh's painting, the name and uh, the motif. Uh, it reminded me of like this star-shaped uh, pieces on the famous painting of, of Van Gogh. And I also tried to keep the colors, the different blue shades and the gold. I didn't have dark blue, but okay, here it is. I hope you like it. <laughs> So this is Starry Night. And yeah, I'm camouflaging on this on this picture because I have only three motifs for now. I have enough material for one more motif, which I will bid together with you on Friday. Five o'clock Central European time. And I think it's uh is it 12 or 11 in New York? Yeah, I will, I will post the information later. <laughs> oh, and I'm really happy that you like it, ladies. Bling, 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 indeed. <laughs> so, what you will need for Starry Night. In the middle, there are six millimeter round pearls. Then the light blue ones, those are three millimeter round pearls. So if you have leftovers, for example, from Vanessa, or from Chandigarh, then you need only one piece of the six millimeter round bead in the middle and uh, eight pieces of the three millimeter for one motif. So you can already have a pendant. So it's also a great project for leftovers. And you will also need three millimeter bicone beads and you will need number 15 Miyuki round beads and Miyuki Delica 11s. The Miyuki Delicas are used in two different colors, and it's about your own decision that if you will uh, if you will use one color or two colors. And about the measurement, that one motif is about three centimeters wide. So in case you need, uh, if you want to make a bracelet, then you can calculate better with the with the, with the amount of material. I will post the details a little bit later, but for you, I will type it in quickly so you can make a note and already start collecting. And what I love to see when you ladies start putting together the color combinations and then you start posting it in the beading group, that's really, really a nice way, I think, to inspire each other. And well, that was it for me for today. Please tell me if you... Uh... Oh, I have to read this. Sharon says, I have a friend who loves everything Starry Night by Van Gogh. She would love this. You can maybe bid it to bid it for her in like even more star starry night colors like dark blue and these golden tones. I am looking forward to see your color combinations. So thank you very much for being with here with me today. I hope you had a nice break during your day. And uh, Please invite your friends to join us on Friday. Put together your beads, show me the color combinations. And to make sure that you will not miss anything, including the special deals with the L2 cabochons, make sure to follow the page. So thank you very much. Oh, sorry, there is one question. I have to answer it. So Anita is asking how to find your beading group on Facebook. Yes, indeed. The bidding group is on Facebook and this is the link. It's an exclusive closed group for, for my uh, bidders, for, for my customers. So everyone 
who is uh, who has already who already bought a tutorial or participated in a workshop can uh, join the meeting club and it's truly like i think it's really becoming a sisterhood it's not only about bidding but it's really nice to hang out there and it's really heartwarming to see how you how it's really started to be a community not just a place to share so thank you very much again and i am really looking forward to friday take care ladies take care my friends bye bye